Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. I hope you're doing well today. Uh, today we are in uh, chapter 22 of the book of Acts. Um, just very powerful testimony that we would have read here of the Apostle Paul. Of course, he is recounting what transpired, the encounter he had with God uh, on that Damascus road. Uh, there is this um, Bible version I use. It's an online Bible Gateway online version. Uh, it's an audio Bible. I tend to read the scriptures first, and then I play the scriptures as well throughout the day, or right, just different moments to hear it, even as much as I would have read it. There is the um, dramatized version of it, and I just wanted to share um, a couple of verses of uh, the dramatized version um, with you just for uh, your benefit. So I am going to play it. Me too. Men, brethren, and fathers, hear ye my defense, which I make now unto you. And when they heard that he spake in the Hebrew tongue to them, they kept the more silence, and he saith, I am verily a man, which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God, as ye all are this day. And I persecuted this way unto the death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women, as also the high priest doth bear me witness, and all the estate of the elders, from whom also I received letters unto the brethren, and went to Damascus, to bring them which were there bound unto Jerusalem for to be punished. And it came to pass that as I made my journey, and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me, and I fell unto the ground, and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw indeed the light, and were afraid. But they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise, and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. And when I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. And one Ananias, a devout man, according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me, and stood, and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him. And he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see that just one, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And now, why tarriest thou? Arise, and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance, and saw him saying unto me, Make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. And I said, Lord, they know that I imprisoned and beat in every synagogue them that believed on thee. And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consenting unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And he said unto me, Depart for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. And they gave him audience unto this word, and then lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth! 
for it is not fit that he should live. And as they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust into the air, the chief captain commanded him to be brought into the castle and bade that he should be examined by scourging, that he might know wherefore they cried so against him. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for This is a particular version that um, I tend to use um, after my reading from the Bible, whether it's on my tablet, or sometimes um, there's a bigger print Bible before me that I can really immerse myself clearly in the details there in the chapter. Um, so we're going to talk just a little bit today about um, what we see in this particular um, chapter. Of course, it starts out with Paul having received um, permission to address uh, the gathering hostile crowd, a mob. Of course, you remember they were attempting to kill him, but he was rescued by God's divine plan. And uh, he took the opportunity to share with them um, his testimony, very powerful testimony. Uh, when we looked at his testimony in Acts chapter 9, um, several days ago when we were at Acts 9, you, you, you remember just a powerful uh, testimony that he shares there. So in verse 3 of our, of our chapter today, he introduces himself that he is a man, a Jew, born in Tarsus, city in Cilicia, and that he was brought up at the feet of Gamaliel. Uh, Gamaliel was the very learned a religious teacher of the day. Um, so it is akin, for example, to the best college today. So when he said that he he sat at the feet of Gamaliel, he's saying that I would have been exposed to the best teacher of the law. I am very schooled in Judaism and the practices of Judaism. And so that is one of the reasons why he would have introduced uh, that very important bit of information, because the moment he said Gamaliel, all uh, the Jewish uh, leaders there would have been aware as to uh, aware as to who he was talking about. So you he, he talked about Gamaliel, um, and that he was taught the perfect manner of the law of the fathers. He said he knew the law in its totality in its perfect sense. Uh, he was not one of those who would have been schooled to a point. He was one who was fully indoctrinated, fully taught as it relates to Judaism. He also made the point that he was zealous toward God. So he was not somebody who was never committed. He was always committed to God and to the teachings of Judaism. And um, he went on to say, as ye all are this day. And so if you just look at the beauty of his presentation, he was not responding in a hostile manner to people who were hostile to him. He understood that the reason why they were behaving the way they were is because they were zealous towards Judaism. Isn't that a beautiful way of expression? Think about it. They almost killed him. He had to be rescued. He was beaten along the way. But he's saying, I understand why you are coming across like this. Because you are zealous. And I was zealous too. Look at transformation. And doesn't that teach a very powerful lesson to us today? Especially us who are apostolics, because oftentimes, if we're not careful, we can come across so braggadocious, um, sometimes very impolite when we are talking religion to people who are not schooled as we are. Because, of course, you know, we have the apostolic truth, praise God. Um, but sometimes, in relating to people who have not yet received that revelation, or people who have refused to accept. God's truth when it was presented to them. Sometimes when we have that, these kind of conversation, we can come across very aggressive. 
But Paul is not taking that route and neither should you and I. He wants their attention. He wanted them to listen because remember, this man is a soul winner. And in as much as he was under great persecution right now, he was obviously using this as an opportunity to witness to people who are lost and needed salvation. So he said, I, I was like you. And may God help us to see ourselves as we try to win people. And sometimes people are very aggressive towards us in our very simple effort of trying to convey truth to them. May we remember that there was a time when some of us, we would want nothing to do with church, nothing to do with God. May we remember that. And because when we do remember that, we, we won't call down judgment on them. We will understand where they are and try to see how we can reach them. Of course, the Bible tells us, he that winneth souls is wise. So in verse four, he continues, is just very beautiful testimony. And I persecuted this way unto the death, binding and delivering into prison, both men and women. He is saying to the congregation, there was a time when I was killing people, killing Christians, because I did not agree with their doctrine. And then he cited, as also the high priest doth bear me witness and all the estate of the elders, from whom also I received letters unto the brethren and went to Damascus to bring them which were bound unto Jerusalem for to be punished. Paul is saying, your leaders bear witness that I was so zealous that I was persecuting the church. They gave me the letters of authority that allowed me to be able to, to, to imprison people, to almost waste the church, attack the church in the way I did. So they know what I'm talking about because they were a part of it. But, but look at how he transitioned from there uh, because what he wanted them to understand was that he had an encounter that radically transformed his life. So in verse number six, and it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. So of course he had said to them, he's testifying and he's saying, I was on my way to Damascus with authorities from the, the leaders, the religious leaders, to imprison, to pull from that portion of the air, that part of the world, all those who were Christians and to take them back to Jerusalem to be imprisoned and to be punished. So I was on my way to do that. And then something happened that radically transformed my life, causing me never to be the person I was before. Look at what he says. And I fell onto the ground when that great light shone round about me. And then I heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And look at verse 9. And I answered, who art thou, Lord? And you remember when we look at Acts chapter 9 and uh, my thoughts when I shared it with you, a better reading of that verse um, in terms of just the substitution of the Lord, it would go something like this. And I answered, who art thou? Jehovah. Because remember, he only knew one God and that one God is Jehovah. So when he was having this encounter, of course, automatically his response was, who art thou? Because he heard a voice. Who art thou, Jehovah? And he said unto him, Jehovah responded and say, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. So Jehovah responded to me and say, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Remember who he was persecuting? The Christians and the message of Christianity. And Jehovah said to him, I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. Look at verse 9. 
And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. And I said, what shall I do, Lord? So when I had that encounter, because he's now beginning to talk about how he became this missionary. Why is he on what seemed to be a crusade of sharing this message with everybody? The Lord said unto me, arise. Before you do anything, arise and go into Damascus, and it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. And we talked a little bit again about that in Acts 9, but just to reiterate the point that, you know, God had called him for a specific purpose. The God who is always in control had called him for a specific assignment that he had appointed him to do. Look at verse 11. And when I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. And one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, Brother Saul. And you remember the discourse that Ananias had with the Lord and said, come on, Lord, don't you know who this dude is? This is the one who is, is at us, is attacking us. He, he has murdered, he has imprisoned. And, you know, we talked on that. Um, but brother Saul spoke to him and said, receive your sight. And the same hour I looked upon him. He's talking what happened to him. He said, I was blind, but when Ananias came and prayed for me, my eyes were open, and that same hour I was able to see. Let's look at it a little further, verse 14. And he said, the God of our fathers hath chosen thee. So he is now recounting what, what Ananias would have said to him, that thou shouldest know his will and see that just one and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. So he's recounting what Ananias said to him as it relates to what God was going to begin to do in his life. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. Ananias told him, you are going to testify, you're going to be a witness of what you have seen and heard. And the word witness, there is Martha, right? Tells you what the end of the man was going to be. But let's read on. Verse Number 16, and now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. So he's telling them the process to salvation there. That's what he's doing. He's telling them that he had to be baptized and he's telling them how he was baptized. He was baptized, water baptized, for the removal, washing away of sins. And it was done by the calling upon the name of the Lord. It was very clear. It came to pass, verse 17, that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance. And saw him saying unto me, the Lord saying unto me, make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. And I said, Lord, they know that I imprisoned and beat in every synagogue of them that believed on thee. And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consenting unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And he said unto me, depart, for I will send thee far from hence unto the Gentiles. He is relating his story, what he would have gone through. He is making it very clear of his experience. Look at verse 22. And they gave him audience unto his word. And then lifted up their voices and said. Away with such a fellow from the earth. For it is not fit that he should live. And as they cried out and cast off their clothes. And, and threw dust in the air. Of course the chief priest. Uh, stepped in with his entourage of soldiers. And took him in the castle. And ex Examining the Bible says by scourging, he was beaten or he was preparing him to be flogged. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? Of course, it was not lawful for that to happen. And so Paul cited that so that, you know, whatever that they were planning to do, 
they would be dissuaded by it. Chief Captain came and told the Roman leader, and when the Roman leader there found out, questioned uh, Paul whether or not uh, he was a Roman, he said, yes, I am. And so he was not afraid to identify as a Roman. Um, but you see, brothers and sisters, um, just what I, I really wanted to observe today, uh, or I observed today, was just a powerful testimony of the Apostle Paul, just how he was able to share that in, the, in his, in a very low moment, in a very challenging space, he remained committed. He shared this great message. And I want to encourage us, whatever we go through, it is our responsibility to share God's truth to God's people. Amen. Many people are waiting. Many people are depending on us. And we have a responsibility to share this message, whatever it costs. Amen. Let's share. Let's tell it. Let's share our testimonies with people. Let's tell them about what God has done for us. In this case, they rejected Paul. And they may reject us as we share our testimony. But our business is to tell it. Their responsibility is to believe and be saved. We look forward, Lord willing, if there is a tomorrow, we look forward to tomorrow when we will look at Acts chapter 23. Um, reading it together and then just having a conversation of what is there. Uh, the Lord bless you and your family. And until then, Maranatha.